for the last portion of our lecture, we'll focus on our case study, the invasive alien species. So this is a recap or a summary of the reading material that we have. I mean, I will not recap it. I will just tell you what to read on the reading material because that would take the, you know, the excitement out of it if I spoon feed you the information. But yes, let's go through that um, material. So, okay, I'll just run over the different um, points, key points in the Invasion Biology Manual. So this is not mine, this is from the DNR. Uh, just managed to get some copy of it. Uh, I, I, I email and take a survey form just to get this. But yeah, I told you to read on unit 1 and unit 2 of the module and what's what's the thing you need to focus on so remember cvd or the convention on biological diversity when you want to define something and you want a real definition from it look at cvd it's an it's an international convention on things what are things no? it's like a definition convention on things and that's not what i want you to focus on i want you to focus on the terminologies right here um right here okay so there's a classical difference between well the classical biology and the invasion biology and most of it would be this table. No? The domain of the classical biology ends here. Oh, well, it doesn't get near the end. But the clear cut delineation between them is the moment of movement out of organism away from their natural um, population range. No? So we have different terms here. I'd like you to focus on what are the natives. Alam na natin endemic. So when what, what do we say when we say native? What do we mean by that? Native or indigenous? We use them interchangeably. Of course, we have the non-native alien, exotic, foreign, introduced, or non-indigenous species. So we have that and we also have what we call established species as i always refer establishment establishment is necessary and then we have what we call naturalized species these are species that are not native but became you know, well became a naturally occurring organism in that area with a self-sustaining pop, uh, population you know? a not so problem population as I, if I may say so myself. So, we also have what we call best and weed differences between them. We have, yeah, those are the things. No? Um, so, if you had want a more defined uh, I don't know, uh, definition from them, we have it here, okay? So next uh, important thing you have to remember or review in that reading is the characteristic of your invasive alien species. We have survival, no, of course, they have high survival. We have a reproduction potential too. And we have a dispersal capability. Those three are the main reason for of the main characteristics of different invasive alien species. Remember that um, from here, no, balik ko lang ulit. Remember that there are this, there is a difference no, between an exotic species, an alien species, and the invasive alien species. Okay, remember that. Okay, going back. So there are characteristics of this invasive alien species and this. Um, paper had summed that up for us. No? So dispersal ability, reproductive potential, and of course the survival in the new environment. Those are the three. No? 
there are actually attributes of successful invaders and these are those I won't read them for you let's just uh, pass them through really fast and now we'll go to this invasion process this is the most important one the invasion process now we have four invasion processes we have the transport the colonization the establishment and the spread and there is the definition from that or how it, it came to be but essentially the most important part of this invasion process well for me i would say the transport and then the establishment process so when we say establishment we refer to the organism having a foothold on the area no so transport is just vector transfer or mere dispersal to the certain new location and then colonization is having some reproductive potential to continue its generation after reaching that new location but when we talk about establishment this is getting a foothold in that new environment and then after that would be the successive uh, spreading of the species throughout the other regions like for example the Laos region to the Bicol region things like that. No? that's entirety of the spread of the organism okay so we have also what we call intentional invasive species no intentional tra intentionally transported this is the cases of your um <laughs> your organism that has been introduced by the government so for agricultural purposes like for food source in protein source now like your egat no you mga catfish or pagkain ng um, animals no yung katulad ng sa arakis pintoy minsan pang ano nga te, pang pang ornamental din siya minsan ng arakis pintoy so food source uh, like for the case of your protein food source daw yung ano dahil kay Marcos gustong gusto ni Imelda kasi yung ano escargot ito yung kwento niya si Imelda daw kasi um, nagustuhan niya yung escargot nung nasa Europa siya tapos nung bumalik siya dito ayun tara dahil natin introduce natin itong pagkain ng Pilipino tapos nung nandito na dumami na yung golden kohol na inintroduce pang palang lasang hindi kinakain ng mga tao so ayun no so aquaculture din yung introduction ng mga non-native tilapia at kung ano-ano pa so that's agriculture for of course recreation so hunting or dates and then we have your ornamentals no so we also have environmental enhancement for that so mga ornamental species like your janitor fish and we have for environmental research and management so mostly the biocontrol naalala nyo ba yung nag, ano, nag, nagtapon ng mga palaka sa kanal para sa mosquito control yun yung mga examples nito no? at yung paggamit ng mosquito fish para makontrol daw yung mosquito eh yung kinakain naman ng mosquito ay eh, yung mga it mosquito fish ay eh, yung mga itlog ng mga natural <laughs> natural and uh, native species yun yung, yung problema and ayun no so aside from intentional talagang inintroduce in ng gobyerno gobyerno talaga may problema niyan may pakanan niyan meron din tayong tinatawag na international ay international unintentional yung tinatawag natin sa mga ship ballast Yo, ito yung problema ngayon at nagiging talamak dahil sa interconnectivity ng bawat um, parte ng mundo. So, ang nangyayari dito, minsan yung Pacific uh, species na introduce dun sa Atlantic species at magkaiba yan. Dahil nga magkaiba, minsan nagkakaroon ng invasiveness. No? Ito yung mga cases ng mga isda na natatrap dun sa cargo discharge, ay nung sa ballast water at yung mga cases ng barnacles no mga ganun some are just contaminants no? just contaminants no or just a near um hitchhiker 
So ayun, no? And then, after that is the major hypothesis in invasion biology. This is would be the last important portion of this reading. Okay? So, biotic resistance hypothesis. Island susceptibility hypothesis. Um, the thing about biotic resistant hypothesis, it's mostly an ecological well, proposition. It states that... Um, you need high diversity. High diversity, biodiversity is important in every ecosystem because higher biodiversity means resiliency or, yeah, resiliency or resistance or essentially being good. Good ecosystem, I mean. And uh, the lower the biodiversity, the more susceptible it is for invasion of, you know. That's why it's actually hand in hand with island susceptibility hypothesis since if you think about it islands are smaller continents <laughs> and since it is a smaller continent since islands are small than your continents i mean you have fewer biodiversity in it and if you have fewer biodiversity it is more susceptible you know, to invasion than your continent and then invasional meltdown hypothesis is a negative hypothesis I mean, uh, for me. You know? It's a very negative hypothesis. It, would, it says um, there's, there would be a cataclysmic event. No? So, yeah. And then we have novel weapons hypothesis. So it suggests that the own, uh, that's why organists, that's why invasive, invasive species are successful is because in that new environment, they are novel. They have novel weapon to use against the natural native species in there. That's why they triumph. And then we have the enemy release hypothesis. It says that since there are no natural enemy, and this is the case for most um, organisms, since there are no enemy, en en natural enemies for your invasive species, they have this release that they experience this release no that's why they grow and boom in population and then tends through and so on and so forth so that's all okay that's all you need to um, study in this uh, portion so good luck in that now we'll move on on the lecture again the last the last 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 part part of our lecture still focuses on the anthropogenic invasive species. The invasive species pa rin yung pag-uusapan natin. And the disturbance or impacts that they could cause. No? So, specifically, we'll talk about the mammal and um, different um, mammals. No? Small mammals that uh, like your rats and your uh, yeah, your small mammals that can uh, introduce damage to crops and stored foods. No? And most uh, of this damage is done by non-native species. No? And if you look at this, this is a, a vegetable garden. <laughs> no, no, this is a cultivated land. We have a pine forest stand right here. We have a, we have a mossy forest. We have a mo lower mountain forest. And... If you look at this graph, I want you to pay attention to this graph because in this graph, you can see that disturbance in a natural habitat exists in a gradient. If you think about it, disturbance exists in a gradient. No? So disturbance in terms of deforestation, for example, it exists in a gradient. And sometimes that disturbance that is brought by humans is actually tied tied to the invasive species too like for the case of your invasive rat species your ratus exulans and ratus anisum but yeah they are tied to that human induced disturbance no and if you look at it it is also a gradient just like the gradient introduced by the deforestation no it's a gradient too. So, 
this is what we also see in the case of not just rats but also the case of plant species well this is not a published uh, work but we have experience we have been conducting experiment in um, Santa Fe Nuevo Vizcaya and we'd like to ano kasi, we'd like to see if the invasive species like you, all of the invasive plant species have been successful at colonizing the ines, ines, <laughs> the innermost part of the the area no the indigenous area uh, uh, the area right there no it's actually a ancestral domain of uh, your italahan uh, it group and we'd like to see if invasive species have been successful at colonizing the innermost part of the da forest that forest in santa fe nuevo vizcaya and we found out but what we have noticed is on the innermost portion of the forest there's not much not much there's no actually no we haven't noticed any invasive species well some grass for example but not so much for the case like for, like for the case of plantana camara that is a really you know a, an example of an invasive species this that is present in the cultivated land of the area too because people plant it there but on the on the inner portion it's not no it's not enough it's, a, it's there's a little you know silver lining in the problem of invasive species no somehow the 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 presence of an intact growth forest no or some secondary forest may have limited the dispersal of that invasive alien species because as we have uh, mentioned earlier if there is an existing you know existing organism that would create a lot harder uh, environment for it to colonize if there is this is already existing it would limit it, you know? that's also the case for your um, uh, rat species no your mam small mammals no that are invasive in nature hmm? they are these non-native mammals these invasive species are largely restricted to the anthropogenic habitats and absent in the old growth forest no, that's the cool thing about this. Native mammals are still abundant in the and diverse in the natural forest. And some of these native mammals, as you, as you can see here, can also, you no, know, like this two, three, four, can also go to certain portion of your disturbed forest. No? It's not like they can you know they can occupy that area no? <clears throat> so as for is if you so sir larry has actually pointed out that as the forest no, regenerates the non-rated the non-native rodents would essentially disappear and the native species will essentially move in as your forest no regenerates so yeah that's that no that's also true true for lowland forests there's a distribution of there's a, there's a certain distribution no so itong tatlo asing to no ito mga to ay invasive species or non-native species that's what i'm referring to so you can see a, a certain gradient they're present in the disturbed it's, it's present on the undisturbed intact forest okay so yep so yep that's it for today thank you for listening if you like the video please leave a thumbs up if you have comments violent reactions and suggestions please leave it down in the comment section below and once again, this is Sir Patrick, signing off. 
میزنه